This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the ASUS Rogue Phone 2. This is their gaming Android phone, obviously second generation. It's 2. ROG stands for Republic of Gamers, in case you're not a gamer. So this isn't the first gaming phone we've looked at. Look, RGB light-up logo on the back. We reviewed the Red Magic 3, for example, which is another gaming phone. So I know, I'm a little late to the party. We've had folks review this before. But let's talk about the different models that are available. There is the US-centric model, which is really high spec out with 12 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage, and that one is $899, so like $900 is pretty expensive. But if you go to places like GearBest, and they're a pretty reputable importer, you can get Chinese goods sent to you, you can get the co-branded Tencent version, which is meant for the China market, but there's also worldwide ROM. So they load it with a worldwide ROM, which means not the Chinese ROM, so pretty much a similar experience, and it's $535 and to $669. I'll talk about those differences a little bit more. So then it becomes a little bit more interesting. Because at least here, where we are in the United States, when phones are like $900, it's a hard sell for anybody. And usually people who are willing to spend that much money are looking at iPhones or high-end Samsung phones, not so much less popular brands. But when you're looking at 535 to 669 then maybe for such a po powerful phone, you might be interested. We're going to look at it now. So the specs on this thing are phenomenal, as you would expect, a gaming phone. Do we need gaming phones? I don't know. I, I leave that up to you. I think it's sort of like the Razer phone phenomenon. Some people are into gaming, and maybe you have ASUS gaming laptops or desktops and hardware, and you like the whole synergy of branding and all that sort of thing. Anyway, that's it. Snapdragon 855 Plus, which is currently the fastest Snapdragon CPU on the market. And if you're looking at the more affordable version that we have here, it still has 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. UFS 2.1, fairly fast storage. So that's a pretty good spec for the price. The display on this is lovely. It's to die for. It's an OLED widescreen display, and it's 120 hertz. So take that 90 hertz displays. And it does seem to run it everywhere. There's a setting, so you can choose 60, 90, or 120 hertz up to you worrying about battery life maybe though the faster screen refresh hasn't affected battery life much that i can see but really good and it's very vivid and it's very bright so that's a selling point for the phone it's pretty heavy that may not be a selling point for the phone It's heavier than even an iphone 11 pro max so you'll feel it but then again today's giant phablets well and this is 6.59 inches for the display size call it 6.6 inches so it's a big screen experience Obviously, the looks on this are pretty gamery, kind of blingy. It's available in two finishes. There's a matte black and there's the glossy black that we have. I would lean towards matte black just because of the fingerprints. It's a GSM unlock phone. So if you're CDMA using Verizon or Sprint, for example, in the United States, this is not the phone for you at all. And the band differences. Uh, I'll list the LTE bands first for the model that we have, the Tencent co-brand, the cheaper one, and then for the one that's intended for the U.S. market that lists more bands. One drawback here, though, is it does not support, support voice over LTE in the United States. So as carriers consider moving to using voice over LTE only in 2020 and going forward with that, that could be a possible problem, something to keep in mind. And so far, ASUS hasn't indicated that they have any interest in adding voice over LTE. The other cons would be no wireless charging, and it's not water resistant. You can't wash this if you get it dirty. It doesn't wireless charge. It does have vapor chamber cooling and vents on the back, so it's a pretty well-cooled phone. If you go for the more affordable 10 cent version, you don't get the little Arctic cooling fan case accessory that clips on the back. Honestly, you don't really need it. This phone does not get burning hot. It cools well on its own. You do get a clear case. It's a hard clear case. There you go. There's that. Now. The accessories here, they can certainly add to the price. And let's talk about those because they're the gamery accessories that you might want. The first thing is pretty neat. It's the Kunai gamepad controller thing. And it's basically a clone of the Nintendo Switch Joy-Con controllers. So you can use them cl clamped onto each side of the phone, which is a nice enough gaming experience for controlling. Or you can take them and just clamp them to each other and have a little game controller. That's $149. And then there's the Twin View dock, which is sort of like what LG did with the LG G8X. It's a second OLED display, matches the primary display, and it has a 5,000 milliamp battery built in. That's $330.
And then there's the mobile desktop dock with fans built in and an impressive array of ports. It looks almost like a laptop docking station. There's 4K video out via HDMI and DisplayPort, and that's $230. And then there's a wide gig dock and a couple of other accessories. So you can really make this kit very expensive. Speaking of the 5,000 milliamp battery that's built into the TwinView dock, well, the phone itself is no such as a 6,000 milliamp battery. And as you might guess, battery life is very good. The only way I found that I could reduce battery life was by leaving on the always on display, which is quite bright. I was surprised that it really doesn't dim up much and uh, it's not monochrome either. And that I would notice about 8% battery drain overnight if I left that on. And you have three, your choice of three different clocks there if you absolutely must have that. The phone does support Qualcomm Quick Charge 4.0 and it comes with a 30 watt charger. So yes, it does do fast charging and it's compatible with slower chargers too. It just won't fast charge with them. The phone does have an in-display fingerprint scanner. It's an optical kind and yes, it's pretty fast. It works just fine. It has face recognition, but it's not the 3D secure kind. So yeah, be careful if you're going to rely on that. Phone has not one, but three USB-C ports. So here's the bottom one, and that's the one you'll use typically for charging. There are two more here under a rubber plug, a black one and an orange one. The black one is the one that you'll use if you want to do ROM flashing, that sort of thing, changing the country code. The orange one, you should never plug anything into, which to me is a design mistake because people get themselves into trouble. Well, at least when you first set up the phone, it does warn you about that. But this is just for their accessories to connect to. And in theory, you might be able to damage the phone if you connect, say, a charger to that. So don't do that. By the way, yes, there is a headphone jack. And this has some pretty good amplifiers. And we have stereo front-facing speakers that are surrounding the display. Really good sound on this, which you'd hope for a gaming phone. Another interesting feature, it's pretty subtle, but you can see the little patterns made in the, the sides of the phone here, is that this has air triggers. So you can use these as controls instead of using the touchscreen when, you know, gaming. And that could actually be a handy kind of thing. So up to you, but it's nice to have. By the way, the front and the back of this are Gorilla Glass 6. The cameras look good on paper, as is the case for a lot of Android phones, and it doesn't always work out that way. The 24 megapixel f2 front shooter isn't bad. The main 48 megapixel camera, that's your usual Sony sensor we've seen on a lot of mid-range to upper mid-range phones, uh, OnePlus has used that and so on. You know, today's camera phones, what makes them good isn't so much the sensor. They all use decent sensors. It's the software that goes with it. And the software here isn't super duper. It's not a horrid camera, but it's not the best I've seen. You also get a 13 megapixel wide angle camera, by the way. No telephoto camera here, but it does have portrait mode. But anyway, the, the photos um, and the video, it has problem with wide contrast scenes. If you go out on a sunny day, for example, you'll see some white out where the sun is bathing a sidewalk or whatever. Color balance is often a little weird and indoor shots are not super sharp. It does have a night mode, which can help with that, but you usually wouldn't use night mode just because you're indoors, right? In home lighting, that sort of thing. But yeah, it falls a little short. Now they're not terrible. You can see the sample photos for yourself, but it's not amazing. It can shoot 4K video up to 60 frames per second. It has slow motion, it has panorama, it has time-lapse, which is fast motion. So there's a lot of features there and the software is intuitive enough, but clearly they could do better with the cameras on this. It's not flagship level by any means. So let's talk a little bit about the more affordable Tencent co-branded version of the phone versus buying the $900 meant for the United States more expensive model. Um, as long as you're okay with 128 gigs of storage, it seems like a reasonable deal. There is no micro SD card slot here. So when you're buying it, you'll find most of the places, gear best included, already have flashed it or they've had ASUS flash it with the worldwide ROM, which means the outside of China ROM. But there's a second thing you have to worry about if you want to get OTA updates or even ASUS's website, just because they're that geeky and they're used to working with gaming product folks. They have all the ROMs available every time there's an OS update available on their website. You can just put it at the root level of the storage and the phone will see it and automatically update. If you want that to happen, then you have to have the fingerprint or the country ID of the phone match. So there are ways to change this. So that gets to be more expensive. So the, the GearBest $669 model looks like they've already changed the fingerprinting too for you. So it does work with OTA updates. The 535 one, no, it has the worldwide ROM, but it doesn't have the country code ID fingerprint change. If, you, if you're if you geeky though, and this could still be fun for tinkering and make it more worthwhile to save some money, you can actually change the country code yourself. And that seems to enable more LTE bands in my experience. Even the 
the cheapest version does have enough bands to get basic coverage with AT&T and T-Mobile, but yeah. If you do want to do it yourself, go head to XDA Developers. They have a very good guide on how to change it over to the worldwide ROM if you don't already have that, how to update. And they also have instructions there on how to change your country code. So you could actually get this running pretty well. It makes it a little bit more attractive. Again, if you're the geeky type, the type that hangs out on XDA Developers, you get the idea. The phone ships with Android 9 Pie, and ASUS has not said anything about any updates to Android 10. There's that. So they have their Armory Crate. Those of you who have ASUS gaming laptops and desktops are already familiar with that. It tells you your temperature, your fan speed, all this sort of stuff. And also they have their Extreme Mode or X Mode, which puts everything pretty much to max for even more performance. It's kind of fun stuff. Um, <laughs> again, it depends on how seriously you take gaming on your phone. So that's the ASUS Rogue Phone 2, particularly the more affordable 10 cent version of the phone. And like I said, if you're adventurous and if you want a really powerful phone for around $535, you could certainly do worse, but you have to know what you're doing. Uh, you have to be a fan of rooting and flat, fast booting and changing your ROM and all that sort of thing to get the most out of it, to get OTA updates working and all that sort of thing. Then you get a really fast phone with a unique gamery look, LED lighting on the back, you get the idea. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit that notification bell.